So later on you can go quote My lies to your people and folk And they say pain That boy be spitting that pressure And he be smoking that pressure And he's smart as a professor Yes sir, 25 lighters on dresser Time to that pressure Sitting right next to him. Next to him. Next to a book and a gun Now the bullet you better use on all right, segment three, BMTV Reflections. Uh, so since this is my first podcast, you might not know this. BMTV, Bad Mirror TV, is the company I run. We do hyper-local video broadcasting to help you find your local awesome. Highly recommend you check it out. These opinions are my own and not that of the companies. Let's go. So a big thing that we do in Bad Mirror TV that we strive to be is a avenue by which people can create narratives, local narratives, challenging national narratives, international narratives. We're really excited by it. We think it's really radical and has the implications to change the world, the way people look at the media, look at themselves, look at their town, look at their culture. There's a lot of cool stuff that we think can come out of it. And, um, you know, I have these conversations and my cousin who's a media studies uh, researcher brought to my attention this this uh, documentary called Hypernormalization and I recommend watching it it's a little too long but um, it's interesting because it does address kind of like the way narratives are built and they do a good job of diagnosing a lot of problems um, but this is a critique, and my plan is to complain a little bit. So let's jump in. So the, f the first thing that I like about hypernormalization is that it makes this claim that I think they said in the 60s or so, the, the hippies were really rocking it, and then they decided to like kind of retreat into their houses and get on the internet and are now impotent losers, and like we brought this upon ourselves. I mean, I, I put a little bit too much into that maybe, but more or less that that was, it was like an offhand comment. So let me start with my offhand comment of my own that I don't think that's the case. I think the hippies were not effective at anything. And, you know, I think that guy, that's just an old person kind of fetishizing the past. So, you know, that's not really part of the critique, but what is the critique? The critique is that, you know, the the one of the arguments made in the in the, thi in the documentary is that, there isn't really like a straightforward, coherent context anymore. And people are kind of disoriented and confused about what's going on. And, you know, I, I think the, the documentarian probably did it on purpose, but his documentary, docu documentary is also really unsettling and schizophrenic in a way and like doesn't always make sense. And, and it's kind of cool because it shows you clips of the past in fairly straightforward way where you're learning something and it's interesting provides historical context but then it jumps onto something and sort of weaves this like meandering narrative that you kind of have to go with and accept for it to make any sense and when when it stops making sense the you know the narrator would would say something along the lines of and they never expected that to happen and and therefore and then they kind of just move on so like when something stops making sense, they're just like, oh, you know, th that doesn't really make sense anymore. So, so I don't know. I feel like if I was making a documentary, I would put more time into it than I would this podcast. And if I ran into something that didn't make sense, I'd probably assume it wasn't, you know, it wasn't complete. It wasn't done. And I, I feel like this one wasn't done. And, and what I mean by that is it, it missed, it missed a really huge thing about you know, if you're trying to document the 60s till now and explain what's going on in the media and in the Middle East and in geopolitics, which essentially this is what the movie tried to do without saying this is what we're trying to do because they were very loosey-goosey about, like, putting out a hypothesis and explaining their assumptions. They kind of just kind of roll with it. Um, so, I, you know, you have to kind of pick, pick and kind of look at the big picture and try to figure out, well, what are they really trying to say? And so what I think they were really trying to say, I think this was like a veiled, um, a veiled anti-Syria piece. And, you know, they were critical of, of a lot of countries, of a lot of people, rightfully so, including Syria, 
rightfully so. Um, but the way they crapped, they weaved the story was just kind of bizarre in that really the only thing that transversed the entire length of the of the of the documentary was this concept of suicide bombing being created by uh, the leader of Syria, Assad, and that it kind of mutates over time, and now it's being used in Syria against uh, Assad's son, uh, Basher. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't know the history of Syria of uh, of suicide bombing to that extent, but the fact that they made such a poetic claim and, and, and the way they presented it throughout the story as if it's really relevant to everything else going on because they talk about suicide bombing happening in all these different places and Syria's role in it even when the role was relatively small. They make it seem like, you know, suicide, suicide bombing's bad. Syria made it. Syria's, you know, Syria's kind of getting what's due their, theirs. So that kind of made me uneasy about it because... You know, if, if, if you're telling a story that's like purposefully schizophrenic and all over the place, to have one overarching or, you know, one of very few overarching themes, it just seems like a strange one to have. And they and again, they bring up Syria in, in times and in situations when there was a way more important, bigger things going on that weren't ever addressed. And I and I think the uh, a good uh, kind of kind of proof or not even not proof, but like one way to to bring that about is the fact that they don't talk about um, Saudi Arabia at all. You know, during any of this, like maybe in little pieces, they they mention Saudi people from Saudi, and uh, you know, they they they, they it's not that they don't talk about it at all, but the the role is almost non-existent. Whereas they make Syria sound like this huge power player, and um, I mean, let me just really jump into like the meat of the meat of what the problem is, because you know, you can you can disagree with me on whether or not this is a hit piece against Syria. That's fine. Um, I mean, it makes sense that they would want to. Like, a lot of the media lately has been against Syria or, or trying to provoke more war in Syria. Um, but the, the the real big problem with this is that they don't. The guy doesn't talk about money at all. You know, I, I don't know how you can talk about a geopolitics thing and, and not address money and not address the petrodollar um, at all, at all. And you know, the, the fact that these are all oil producing countries and the ones that are, are the enemies in the story that they present are the ones that are not selling their oil for US dollars and ultimately become the enemies of the world and murdered. It's just, it's just that is such a more coherent story than the schizophrenic story presented by the director. And I don't know if, you know, again, I don't know if it's, it's purposeful or just ignorance or what. But I, I felt compelled to to explain that that the the dollar situation is what's driving these these actual events happening, and you know you the uh, the, the best one to describe is really what happened to Libya. They talked about Libya a lot in the documentary, and they talk about kind of the character of the leader Gaddafi, um, Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi, and. I mean, again, it was it's it was cool. It was cool to see the old clips and understand a little bit more about him and his background. But they don't talk about the fact that he was creating a pan-African currency that was going to be backed by gold. They don't talk about the fact that he was bringing together the countries of Africa to push out the petrodollar. And right around when that happened is when sentiment changed against him, and then he ended up dead not too long thereafter so it's a big deal and it's just it's not even it's not even glossed over it's not even addressed at no point is money talked about at all hardly is u.s involvement talked about at all they kind of just say they kind of just brush it off saying oh the u.s were confused and they made mistakes you know anyone would have done it anyone would have made these mistakes um and you know it, and there's no overarching policy just because they're so confused and the Russians are there, and we're also confused why they're there. Also, we, we we're not really sure. Um, but what we do know is that Syria is bad, and Libya is bad, and 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 Trump's bad. We know that, and and so that's kind of it's it's just a very weird storytelling, and it makes it that much harder to critique it, especially given that it's so long, and I only watched it once. But here here's how I tie it into Bitcoin: is that 
he talks, this documentarian talks about people going online and finding voice and being able to create narratives on the internet and it, it empowers them and it's great. And he's excited about it in the sense that he talks about it in a political measure. He talks about email hacking and voting. He talks about how hackers can uh, disrupt large corporations and how there's this kind of political activity going on on the internet, which is true, which depending on your view of what makes good activism, you can be pumped about or you can say, like me, you know, that's played out democracy's got it you know it's been good but there are better things out there so so he he kind of says that and then that's it you know he mentions it but he's you know the internet's great it can help supplement my current belief system but it's not going to offer anything else and quite frankly that sucks that is such a bad perspective and for him to for them to kind of just end the 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 story the way they did in okay now Trump's president and everything sucks and we we just have to take a step back and really figure out our priorities misses the fact that there are people that diagnose diagnose the problem there are people who are using the internet to not only complain and sign petitions and hack emails to change the way people view their politicians they're also creating their own currencies to go up against the petrodollar they're creating entire systems that go up against legacy systems. Bad Mirror TV goes up against legacy broadcasting systems. Bad Mirror TV, sorry, Bitcoin goes up against the legacy banking system, le legacy finance system, legacy national state-backed money system. It's incredibly radical. It's, it's going to change everything, and it's not mentioned once. It's not mentioned once, and it's because he's, it's it's past his time. He just doesn't understand it. Um, you know, if I ever do get to meet this guy, I will ask him kind of more about what were you thinking. I have a feeling the case is not that he was vindictive. I, I find that pretty unlikely. Um, more the case that it's probably just not in his purview of things he follows or understands, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so what would, so would I recommend you watch this movie? Uh, yeah, probably. I would say probably keep an open mind, though. Know that you're not being told the whole story. Know that you're going to be left feeling confused, and it's the intention of the video creator to do that. And he does it. In a, he does a pretty good job of it. I mean, it's it's a nice, it's a cool experience. I think it's got a kind of th that those zeitgeist videos where they, it's got like a revolutionary feeling to it. So overall, um, you know, pretty cool. But there are, there are a lot of shortcomings and so just know that you're, you're seeing a very small picture of reality and it's kind of a good way to figure out like uh, uh, you know like kind of why people are freaking out because the, the premise of the whole movie is that just we don't know what the fuck's going on and you know and we never did and we never could basically um, which you know I, I don't fully buy into but nonetheless pretty cool so uh, you know, this was this was my first first go doing a podcast. Uh, like I said, I'm doing it for practice. I'll be in Bucharest, Romania, February 22nd and 23rd at the D10E uh, conference, which is the kind of prime time decentralization conference. There'll be a lot of great speakers, some big names too, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to travel to Bucharest to be on a panel discussing the decentralization of the media and how Bad Mirror TV plays into that. And I think I might be doing a 45-minute speech. I'm not sure, but I need to practice talking and not losing my voice and not getting flustered. So this is, I hope, you know, if you guys want to give me some feedback on how I can do better or if, if I, you know, wasn't making sense or, or questions you have or, or things you hated and you want to tell me I suck, like, um, you know, go ahead. Um, I suggest, you know, you, you, you like the Facebook page, follow the YouTube subscription, whatever. Um, all right, be good. Tell me what you want me to cover. I'm going to probably do this once a week. And, uh, you know, really the goal of it is to let people know what's going on behind the scenes of Bad Mirror TV. You know, when I inter 
you want to meet some new people, interesting people, I'll interview them. Um, I'll just document kind of the more interesting stuff that's going on for for posterity's sake and just for your general enjoyment. So, you know, I have I have lots of ideas that I feel like need to be discussed more openly and I think I'm probably going to change the format of this because I don't think I really got into the details of it. I think I started my my approach wasn't the best with like writing an essay and then trying to work that backwards into podcast PowerPoint form. But I, you know, it could be a lot worse. I'm I'm sure I could, you know, whatever. All right, well that's it. I'll, I'll miss you till next time. Bye, loves.